In this video, we're going to explore how we can use the Chart.js annotation plugin. And this is an interesting plugin because with that, we can start adding up items here. And the most important thing what we're going to do first is how can we install this Chart.js plugin annotation to get it working. In this video, we're going to focus on how to install the Chart.js plugin annotations in Chart.js. And the annotation plugin can be very interesting because with that we can do a lot of things. So let's start to explore because right now we're going to look at this specific plugin that Charges has. And if you've seen maybe some of my other videos about how to create an arbitrary line, basically an arbitrary line is a annotation, is similar to the annotation plugin, except that we're going to we are coding it really from scratch and doing all these formulas built in here. Alright, so Maybe you're not interested in building it from scratch, but you want to use a plugin to help you out. All right, so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to explore this plugin because it's quite interesting. So let's start to work with it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a default code. So just go to chargest3.com getting started. And in here, we're going to grab the default code here. Just copy this chunk of code. And once you copy this, and if you would like to understand what this code does, please check out this specific video here that explains it all. All right, so once we have that here, we're going to paste that code in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this title here, just put it in there. And then we can save this. Once we save this, we have a nice bar chart here ready to start with. All right, so we have this now. And now what we need to do here is the very next step is to install or basically grab the link to add up here the, the annotations plugin. Uh, JavaScript library. So what we're going to do here is we go to this one, make sure you go to the cdnjs.com and then you search here for the chart.js-plugin-annotation and once you find it, you'll find here the latest version. Quick heads up here, get this version at least or anything above. Why? Version 1.0.2 is the latest one that supports chart.js3. If you have chart.js2, there are other versions, if I'm not mistaken, it is this one here, the 5 or 0.5.7. However, I would not recommend you to go to Charges version 2 unless it's absolutely necessary. So in our case, we're going to use the latest version here. So we're going to click here and copy the script. And then we have this code. We're going to paste this code in here. So once we have this here, make sure this is loaded after Charges library. And the reason why is because this here has certain dependencies that needs to be loaded first in here, all right? So once we save this here, and refresh, we have it done, and basically we should be able to work with it. However, sometimes you need to register differently or you have to still activate it. So to do that, you go to the chart.js or chart.js plugin link or this specific link here. If you want to really figure it out in chart.js.org, you have what they call the uh, the awesome option i will show you later on how it works and then you can get there as well but basically this is the link here it's very simple all right so it says here warning this plugin needs to be registered it does not function as an inline plugin all right that's all right so you can see here this is basically the item that you need to do if you do an npm here and if you go here to an installation i'm going to show you two more ways basically to install and right here on the installation yes oh integration that's the one we need so according here, if you have just the, the script tag, you are basically good to go. Sometimes you might want to register it. And especially if you see my other videos about Zoom, sometimes it's like this. So there's two options here if it doesn't work. So you have here what they show you here, the uh, chart register this part. If you copy this, you put it in here. You grab this with this, or you need to grab this one here. It's one or the other. That's this one here. All right, so that might be one or the other. Next, this is another one. This is normally what I was expecting here as well to register it. It's basically here in the options. And oh, uh, that's not what I wanted. Sorry. How am I here after that? And then you probably have seen in my Zoom plugin or my other plugin or with the data labels, we're going to put in plugins and then we say here the plugin name, which will be eventually this here just to register. All right, so then we put in here this. And then we could save that and then it will activate. However, according to 
right now to to this it should already work without both of these options if you have the same structure what i have no basically a desktop here all right let's save that here for now and then let's start to work with the annotation plugins so to create the annotation plugins and there's many options here you can see here if i click on usage i think you see some options here do i see here some uh demonstration this is the one here beautiful squares lines with text and they have ellipses or circles basically so what we're going to do here just to create something quickly so we go in here in the options and in the options we're going to put in here the plugins because it's a part of the plugins and then in the plugins what you need to do here make sure you have a comma here because we have the skills afterwards and then in here we're going to say annotation and then oh sorry before we do the annotation this is a very important we have to say here auto color colors with an s fonts all right i was going to show you later on why because a, there's a default color that will overrule everything else so then we have the annotation annotation make sure you spell it correctly and then we have here another annotation but this one is annotation with an s all right so we are in the object and then we have in the first in the plugin the annotation plugin and then we have here the annotations variable or object all right so in here we have annotations with an s because we can pinpoint here a specific annotation so the first one we want to say is we want to create a box and we can call this box one all right so in this box one we're going to create our first annotation which will be a type and that type will be of course a box which is a string value next what we're going to do here and this is quite nice because here you can pinpoint let's say we want to or we want to select a certain starting point we want to start from here all the way to thursday all right so we have this x skill and then we have a starting skill of x here all the way to here so that will be that we have here because remember if we're working with the x scale which is the horizontal scale here we have this is an array value x zero one two three four five six all right we work with this array and that's zero base counting so we want to have it here but you will notice that the starting point will be in the center so we need to move it eventually here but that's all right i'm going to show you first what we get so we say here x minimum and the x minimum here is our starting point is number one it will be here all right let me put a comma and let me say x max which would be where will it end and basically will end here or we want to have, have it ended on the thursday so we say here um, this value here thursday so that would be one two and three that's it because this is zero all right so we say here number three comma and then we have the same methodology or same principle but then on the y min well let's do y min first before we do the y max and the y min stands basically for the or, uh, sorry for the vertical line here or vertical scale here so where do we want to stop well in this case we would like to stop it or let's say we want to select this all up to the top here and then here this nice square so we select these three items here so we start here at y0 all the way up to y18 and you might wonder what why is this or what's the purpose or how come it's like this because we have here zero and then here number one is considered y1 then number two is considered y2 and this is not always so imagine if we have 0 10 20 30 etc etc then here this would be uh, a different number of course well, I'm, I'm not even sure about that we can test that one i guess that's all right we will test it later so we can say here why this well let's see if that is really the case i guess that will be the case as well it should be all consistent from one from zero all up to whatever the scale value is that would be far more logical all right so if i'm going to save this now we're not yet done because we still need to put in a color so let's say your background color and then what i will do just for the sake of it i'll just grab this specific background color here and then we just give it a proper alpha alpha value here because this alpha value is a one i don't want this i wanted a bit of transparency so we do this save this refresh and now as you can see we have here a nice box but we are not satisfied with the box because you can see where it ends or where it starts and ends we need to start at the beginning and then here at the end this is because we are working here with what we call a category cartesian a cartesian is basically the type here of the scale and the x scale here is a category so it's always here in the center 
All right, so it's not a line. If it's a line, it's it will be differently. But that's all right. So let's fine tune this a little bit. It's a good exercise. So we can see here 0 0.5. And if you do 0 0.5 here, you can see here now we select one part here. And then we want to move this a bit more to the end. So we can say here, and the max value will be 0 0.5 as well. Here we are. All right, so my question would be, what happens if we have here a huge scale? So I want to just increase our scale here to, let's say, 1,000. Will it be exactly the same? Well, apparently it will just be the same. It will recognize it and it consider it as well. So that would mean that here 1,000 would be really 1,000 in value here. All right, so that makes sense, of course, because it's easier to understand how to do this. All right, and there you are. So basically, this here, same methodology. You just get the final or the value here on the scale. All right, so this is one of them. And of course, there's more. In the next video, I will cover some other part of this wonderful annotation plot.